not currently at war. It looks like we're possibly stuck again. And on the 4th of January, to be exact, are we going to continue ticking? Are we going to continue ticking? Can Greek be Sicilians? I don't know. Can Greeks be Sicilians? It doesn't appear to be the case. Well, yeah, because, you know, it starts out as a, as a Greek province to begin with. Looks like 4th of January 773 is going to be the date that it's going to be stuck on for the moment. We may have to uh, do a quick rehost after this. Oh, there we go. We're starting to tick again. As uh, Rufo needed to disconnect. And we're on our way again on speed 3. My apologies for the uh, slight mishap there. But as you can see, Grugi is slowly but steadily growing. And he's uh, taking over these territories nicely. And uh, he's actually taking over Estonia right now as a... Uh, Estonian subjugation of the Rus? That is very interesting. It's actually the, the Estonians that are take, trying to take over the Rus right here. Let's see how Grugi is going to deal with this. It's going to be a bold tactic, uh, Cotton, but see how it all works out for him. As he's got more than enough troops to actually deal with this. I don't know if he's got enough prestige, though, to actually get another uh, tribal army going. He needs 500 prestige to do so. It's going to be difficult for him to do. Also, when I was talking earlier on about uh, forming a merchant republic, you need to have your capital on the water. So if you go over towards Scotland, for instance, I don't think their capital is... Is their capital on the water? I don't see a crown. I don't see a crown at all. Should be on the water, but they should be able to create a merchant republic at some point in time. But yeah, Estonia is not going to survive this little onslaught. And more and more more and more prestige is being added towards the ranking here of Gurugi and doing just fine. He can actually call in some allies if he really wanted to for the subjugation of Rus. But uh, I don't think we're going to have any, he's going to have any trouble with that at all. This map is kind of a cluster frank from a historical point of view. Well, it, it is, you know, it's feudal it's tribals fighting tribals, to be honest, and we have already been taking for about 10 years, so the map is never going to be look anything like you'd expect it to be. Which, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's Paradox Grand Strategy Games. The, the start of the game may be somewhat correct, but as soon as you hit that unpause button, the game is going to be completely different. In the meantime, I'm keeping my eye on Swiftfield here. A Sigur, Sigur Ring is slowly but steadily growing the uh, Sifjot here. And as you can see, he also has a son called Ragnar Sigur, who is brave. He's got some good stats. He's seven years old. We're going to keep an eye on him. He's going to be... We're going to keep an eye on him in about ten years. Maybe in a little bit... Little, but when he's seven. When, in about seven years, in 780. We're going to go and take a look again at him. See how little Ragnar is doing. And uh, he can have a gray blot. And he's trying to revoke, actually, the chiefdom of uh, Vesmalant. And he's actually going to push that. Yes, he is. So immediately, the AI is uh, trying to revoke titles here on these, uh, on these other AI. And that's pretty much what's going on under the hood. You may be doing all these things in your own kingdom somewhere around the map. But there's definitely a lot going on all over the place with the AI revoking titles here and there because they don't like each other and then other stuff happens and other stuff happens again. So there's definitely a lot of things going on under the hood pretty much all the time. And oh my god, some of these matches get himself uh, a significant territorial gain here. Lanhos Shalaman managed to get himself uh, a big chunk here of Egypt. Very nice. Still, though, we need to see... Ah, actually, so Divine is slowly but steadily growing territory as well. Taking over a big chunk here of the uh, of the coast. And he does have himself a small rebellion on his hands. Should not have any problems whatsoever with that. If we quickly go over... And he is actually the Duke of Aquitaine. 7,000 troops. Actually, no, that's completely wrong. He has got... 1,300 troops. So that should, in theory, be enough to take to swat down his rebellion. Can you create the Holy Roman Empire? If so, yes. It does look like that... Uh, it does look like that uh, 
our king managed to lose out here in uh, Italy. He lost a lot of his troops. So let's take a look here at Charlemagne. And specifically take a look here at why, what it takes to create the Holy Roman Empire. So to found the Holy Roman Empire, it is a decision that you have to make. And it's uh, actually quite an interesting decision, because right now he could, in theory, do it, but he needs to become king of Italy, which is why the war actually started here over Lombardy, which then, of course, turns into Italy later on. But as you can see, oh, here we go. He is actually going for a holy war because the Umayyads. It's actually the Umayyads invading West Francia. So all of a sudden, the Duke of Aquitaine, one of our players, has got a serious problem because the Muslims won his territory. This is going to cause some serious problems. So let's take a look here at the Holy Roman Empire, as we just already discussed. The conditions is A, you need to be an adult. B, you should not be a prisoner. C, you should not be incapable. Makes sense. You need a prestige of 1,000. You need a realm size of at least 220. You need to be kingdom, uh, king of Italy or emperor of Italia. You need to have at least one kingdom title or emperor title within the de jure empires of Francia, Germania, Hispania, or Britain, or Britannia. Have uh, no ruler is emperor of Italia or the other four three. You need to have the head of the religion needs to have an opinion of you of at least one hundred. And on top of that, you need a personal wealth of two hundred twenty one, which is absolutely negligible. So a the pope needs to like you. B you need to have 220 uh, territories under you, and your realm size needs to be that size, because right now it's 360. You need to be king of Italy, or uh, emperor of Italy, and there should be no other emperor in this particular area. But yeah, the Umayyads are definitely trying to invade uh, Charlemagne here, and Charlemagne is immediately pulled in uh, the Bavarians as well. So let's take a look here at what Charlemagne can actually levy. It's going to be very difficult for him, to say the least, especially for the Umayyads. He's currently got a top levy of 9,500, but uh, the Umayyads are already there, and they've got uh, 7,000 at this point in time. How much did I say? 9,000, right? Well, look at the ter territory here as well. Charlemagne is potentially in for some serious kickassery, because we're going to go and take a look here at the Umayyads and how many troops they can levy. They can levy slightly less than Charlemagne. However, Charlemagne is on his way. This could be difficult, though, because this territory territory is hills. He's going to be at a bit of a disadvantage. Does He He has actually call is on the flank. Let's do this. He's at a disadvantage, but what is it going to be? Is he going to be strong enough to take over all of these flanks? He's losing troops very heavily on the left flank. This is going to be absolutely devastating if he landed to lose his flank. It has fallen. The pursuit mode has been engaged. The other flank goes in, and no! Even with a 2,000 troop advantage, managed to lose out here. And this is why he do not attack in the hills. And now his low morale troops are going to be attacked once again. And they're going to lose out very quickly. Although both sides are losing flanks, left, right, and center. A lot of troops dying all over the place. He's going to move into the hills again. But the Umayyans have 5,000 troops right there. It looks like our player in Aquitaine is going to lose a massive, massive swath of territory here right off the bat. That is not good at all. That is not good at all. It looks like the Umayyads are going to start off very strongly here at the start of the game in 775. This Palladium has sadly disconnected. It happens sometimes. But where is Roland? Oh, Kendra has died. Okay, so he didn't actually get disconnected. Palladium actually was game over. Her dynasty came to an end. Such a sad time indeed. Quickly need to check if I'm actually on Skype here. Yeah, I am. And another engagement happens. There's just not enough troops to hold this steady. Flanks are falling. The Umayyads are going to win this war. Unless something big happens. And immediately dangerous factions pop up all over the place. As lower crown authority, as well as the independence is, uh, faction is going to be fired here soon. And it, this is pretty much what Aquitaine needs. But Aquitaine is being invaded by the Umayyads. If they can force independence, they still are going to have this massive power block to the south of them, ready to be invaded by angry Muslims. Islam dude, does not falter. The Caliphate must grow.
Let's take a look at what else is going on around the map. More troops are being levied here by the sh by by Carl. Can he actually get money from the Jews? Yes, he can get money from the Jews, as well as expel them immediately to get mercenaries. That's exactly what he needs to do to get out on top here. He's going to have a difficult time to do so, though. In the meantime, let's take a look around the map, see what other players are up to, and if they're growing nicely. Emma Kep up here is uh, one of the new players. Actually, he's the project lead on the game, and he's uh, up here in the Satrapi in uh, Nadine. Doing just fine, just chilling out. It's growing nicely. Is uh, he is? There is a. Uh, oh no! Zunbil is being invaded by Mbamian. That is a. That is a problem. We may have ourselves Zunbil being subjugated by these guys, by the other Zunbils. Still, let's take a look at the religions. The Catholics are under serious pressure here from the Muslims, the Sunnis. Let's take a look at the culture, the Visigothic culture up here being suppressed. Swaby up here, the Akhetations having some problems. The Franks, of course. The Frisians, who are brand new, obviously. The Saxons. Well, there's a Saxon uprising going on here. Uh, Arbitrage counts feudal or tribal. Let's take a look. They are very much feudal. At least as far as I can see. But the, the West Franks being overrun. Will Germanic religion become Norse if Saxony falls? I do not know. Let's find out. As Svifjot is slowly but steadily continuing to grow. As uh, Sigurd with his 29 marshal. The guy's got 29 marshal. Off the get-go. That is ridiculous. And Ragnar Sigurdsson. Who will be Ragnar Rothbok. Who is not only arbitrary, but he's kind, gregarious, and brave. He is a grave, gregarious guy. So he basically talks people to death with his bravery. It's kind of ironic, actually. Show us the release of map mode, please. Well, there it is. Slavs, Tengri, Catholics, Sunnis, Mephestites, West African, of course. Zunist, Manchian, Sumanesco, Tengri. Right now with 303 ducats, uh, yeah, he's doing just fine. So he's slowly but steadily starting to grow in the territories as well. Oh, hello, what's going on here? Bohemia. Karsten has managed to take over significant territorial gains and can actually increase his uh, military organization. Now we need to have a chat here about uh, these guys. See this button? You can call all your vassals and allies to war with one button. Is that cool? I thought it was. But yeah, as you can see, if we go to retinues, they have been changed slightly. Skirmishers will only uh, get you uh, a minimum amount. Oh, he's finally pregnant. What is the Saxon Civil War all about? Let's take a look, shall we? The Saxon Civil War is about lower tribal organization. As the Umayyads have managed to win here in the south of France, the Ossetations are not going to be happy about that at all. They're going to have some serious problems here.